The portrait of Dr. Gachet by Vincent van Gogh, due to its impressionism and deep emotional context, was once labeled as degenerate. However, now this painting is highly sought after, giving the label degenerate a positive and aspirational new meaning. Vincent van Gogh was born in 1853 in the Netherlands, where he learned and developed his love of art and his stylistic signature. Van Gogh was largely self-taught by studying the works of other artists and finding his own specific style through it. He studied prints, drawing manuals, and lesson books. He began using black and white and evolved to use vibrant colors in his work, which he is fairly known for doing, which are featured in many of his most well-known pieces. His first work, however, The Potato Eaters, was a very dark and dismal depiction of a peasant family having dinner together. Van Gogh wanted to portray a working family and tie the emotion of their struggle into his art. The painting was meant to depict the harsh reality of rural life, and as an impressionist he gave the peasants coarse faces and bony working hands. He wanted to show in this way that they have tilled the earth themselves with these hands that they are putting into the dish, that they have thus honestly earned their food. Van Gogh eventually left the Netherlands to study in Belgium, but shortly after he left for Paris to live with his brother Theo, who was very much a crutch for him. He began to study there, and during his learning process and stylistic evolution, he was prompted to switch to a more lighter and more vibrant color palette. He later moved to Arles to further his career in art, but after moving he experienced psychological issues, prompting him to cut off his own ear, which he is now infamous for. He later voluntarily was admitted to a psychiatric hospital where he continued to pursue art and after he left he returned to live close to his brother again. It was not much later that in the care of Dr. Gachet, his physician, Van Gogh shot himself in the chest and died two days later, leaving the portrait of Dr. Gachet to be one of his last works of art. Gachet himself, as it turns out, was a lover of art as well, befriending many artists and even creating his own works which he signed P. Van Rysel. Van Gogh's portrait of Dr. Gachet was very melancholy. The pose of Gachet with his head resting on his hand gives an indication of sadness in Gachet. The two novels next to him are also contextually sad, playing into the mood of the painting. The choice of color is also a notable factor contributing to the overall feel of the piece, due to the fact that they are darker and heavier than Van Gogh is known for using. It is also known that Van Gogh was an impressionist artist rather than realistic meaning there are certain aspects of the painting, such as the thinness of Gachet's face, that do not mirror his actual facial features, which in photos were noticeably fuller. In Van Gogh's own words, I had to paint him like that to convey how much expression and passion there is in modern heads. That is how one ought to paint many portraits. Analyzing this impressionistic take on the actual subject of Dr. Gachet details Van Gogh's own personal issues and explains his interest in portraying rural life and poverty because the struggle of those he depicted most likely mirrored his own. This impressionism and use of a more abstract and deeper meaning led to this painting being given the label of degenerate. Van Gogh's painting was initially stolen by the Nazis from the Stadel Museum in Frankfurt, Germany after hanging there for 20 years and being admired by the Jewish citizens that lived in the city at that time. When the painting was stolen, it became the possession of Nazi officer Hermann Göring. It was initially described with disrespect as degenerate, which was a term adopted by the Nazi regime in Germany, which they used when referring to almost all modern art. This degenerate art was banned due to it being un-German, Jewish, or communist in nature. So after realizing the value of this painting, the Nazi officer auctioned the work off for a profit. The painting was purchased by a German art collector who soon after sold the art to Siegfried Komarski, a Jewish man who fled to the United States to escape Hitler's regime. After Komarski's death, his family chose to sell their copy of his piece for $82.5 million to Ryoi Saito, making it the most expensive piece of art ever sold at that time in history. After Saito's death, the painting's whereabouts have been unknown, making it an extremely mysterious piece of art to this day. The painting at this point is said to be worth twice what it was last paid for due to the excellent quality of this work. It is said that the painting could have been sold after Ryo Saito's death to a currency speculator, Wolfgang Flodel, 
Due to some scandals involving bank fraud, it is believed that Flodel was forced to sell the painting to an anonymous buyer in Switzerland. The Swiss art collector is now deceased and the art is once again lost. However, it is likely somewhere for sale because many people have expressed interest in purchasing it. Though its last known buyer's family likely sold it, it is unknown where exactly it is now. There is much speculation, however, proving how important this piece of art is, and there are still a great deal of people searching for this piece with the intent to own it. This piece is clearly incredibly valuable due to its history of being underappreciated, to being labeled as degenerate, and to being the most expensive piece of art ever purchased at that time in history. Vincent van Gogh's work has proved to be so significant that he has transcended its history in the label of degenerate, proving what was once outcasted can even become a staple of human history and culture. To learn more about what degenerate art means to an abstract and impressionist artist, I decided to interview an artist I know who happens to be my mom over email to get her insight on a situation similar to that of the portrait of Dr. Gachet. In her words, if I had lived during that time, I would have been very fearful for my life, obviously. Having the work stolen meant they took notice of me and remaining outside the scrutiny of the Nazi eye would have been very important. Having anything stolen, though, feels like a violation. Is something you put your heart into that you put work into seems even more so, I imagine. My art probably would have been considered degenerate due to how the people and images are being depicted in an untraditional way. Though I believe that most art made during this time period would have been seen as degenerate during that time period. If one didn't fall within that narrow political frame of mind, they would have been considered degenerate. Art is the exact opposite of narrow and should be a freedom of expression and push the boundaries of thought. The Degenerate Art Museum, I think, was accidentally a piece of art itself. It was a statement and it drew people into it and that is what art does, it makes a statement. Hitler's perception of art was obviously very narrow. If you know his background of how he wasn't accepted into art school, he was probably angry and therefore wanted control of Expressionism. Also knowing that he didn't personally pick each piece of art that was stolen reflects how strict his political guidelines were and how strictly they were followed. Having my art displayed in the Degenerate Art Museum would have been a double-edged sword. On one side it would be insulting in a way because an establishment decided your art was not good, but in another way it would have almost been a blessing because you are now anti-establishment and it draws people to your art, and it also ignites conversation about your art. Art shouldn't just be pretty, it should evoke emotion and conversation. Ultimately, I would have been honored to have my art in the Degenerate Art Museum, because every artist wants to be outside the norm and wants to be creative and push the limits while still being current, insightful, and imaginative. Considering how valued modern Impressionist and abstract art is now, versus during the Nazi regime, it says about our culture that we understand and can appreciate diversity and see it as a positive. We invite interest in issues and we value things that aren't just pretty. We value controversy, different perspectives, and mostly conversation. Cultures form when people are allowed to think freely. In fact, progress of any sort is dependent on this. When you stifle the creativity and expression of individuals, you stifle their humanity and you stifle human culture and progress as a whole.